Second. We'll call to order the Monday, Ju uh, January 20th meeting of the Verona Committee of the Whole. And we will have the roll call, please. Alderperson Manley? Here. Alderperson Yours? Here. Alderperson Bear? Here. Alderperson Riki? Here. Mayor Hokemer? Here. Alderperson Doyle? Here. Alderperson Diaz? Here. And Alderperson <coughs> Steiner, I believe, is here and just will be joining us shortly. And Alderperson McGilvery uh, may be absent this evening. Thank you, Mr. Burns. We do have a quorum. We will proceed with the agenda. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak this evening? Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak? Again, this is uh, Committee of the Whole this evening. Anyone from the public that wishes to speak? Seeing none, uh, we will move on the agenda. Next is approval of minutes of the November 18th meeting of the Committee of the Whole. Those minutes were included with your packet. And what's your pleasure? We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Rickey. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, approval of minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried and the minutes are approved. Um, again, in uh, committee of the whole, uh, we don't take any action on any of these uh, other items that are on the agenda. It's for discussion purposes only. We can you know, talk about consensus and move forward in that way, but there's no actual votes taken on any of these agenda items. So with that, um, Mr. Burns, did you want to uh, start out on agenda item number five, which is discussion regarding the North Neighborhood Planning Process? Thank you. Yeah, we, we have three main topics that we were going to be discussing tonight. Uh, the North Neighborhood Planning Process, uh, the city's existing intergovernmental agreement with the city of Madison, and the potential for boundary agreement discussions with the town of Verona. Uh, Adam and I have put together so, some materials um, that we wanted to walk through, and we're hoping to have this as kind of a, a discussion. So we've got some slides that we want to go through to provide some background. Um, but if there's questions or discussions as we go, um, please let us know. Um, Adam's going to start by taking the lead on the North Neighborhood Planning Process, but again, both of us will probably be uh, jumping in back and forth here as we go through the different topics. Um, there is a notice on the agenda for the ability to go into closed session after we get through the, the presentation and the open session discussion. Um, if the body is interested in discussing, discussing anything related to negotiation strategy on intergovernmental agreements. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Mr. Sarah. Thank you. So the first item on the agenda is the discussion of the North Neighborhood Planning Process. And I think before we kind of dive into the North Neighborhood, I think it's just important to talk about what is what is neighborhood planning? Um, so neighborhood planning is an individual or specific plan for certain areas of the city. And the two that we've completed so far are the Southeast Neighborhood Plan and also the Southwest Neighborhood Plan. Now another good example of this too is, is our downtown plan. That's a plan that we had a chance to look at some items in detail. We looked at land use in detail. We looked at transportation in detail. Um, and what the neighborhoods plan allows us to do is look at items more specific than we do in the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is more general, uh, generally looking at the entire city, looking at some overall goals, goals for it. Uh, the neighborhood plan is intended to be specific, looking at transportation issues, land use issues, looking at environmental and open space, where a park could be located within a neighborhood, um, phasing, how, how, the, how the development could actually phase in that area as well. So it's trying to get more into the nuts and bolts of that specific area of, of the city and for that planning process. Um, one thing to point out, though, it is not intended to be a detailed development plan. It's not intended to be uh, basically developing or creating a development plan for a developer to come in. Its intent, its intent is basically to put the, the framework or the, the pieces in place so when a developer walks in, it's creating more certainty for the developer knowing what he or she can do, but also creating more certainty for the public when they ask what's going to happen there. We can tell them this is what's going to go on there versus it being too general where we don't have an answer for it. So um, it's not intended to be so specific that it, it, it gets down to the local street level that you we lay out every, every spot where a local street is going to be, a street tree and whatnot, a light pole. It's just intended to be more you know, specific but not overly specific, specific that you review an actual development proposal. So in looking at what we've done in the past, um, in the Southwest Plan and all neighborhood plans, you look at what's out there right now. We look at existing land uses. Um, so for this one, we looked at agriculture, well, land, commercial land, residential land. Uh, typically, this is found in any type of land use document. Um, 
We then also looked at future land uses and street plans. Um, one thing I'll, I'll point out on this is, and I'll get back to this in a minute, is uh, the southwest plan and also the southeast plan had land use categories such as residential, non-residential uses. Um, this might be an item that we want to improve upon in the north neighborhood and, neighborhood and trying to get more specific. You know, what, what is a residential land use? Is that a single family land use or is that a multifamily land use? Um, so, but I'll talk about that in more detail in a few minutes. Phasing uh, is pretty self-explanatory, looking at how the neighborhood could phase itself by, from a development standpoint. Also looked at park open spaces uh, in the southwest plan. It's close to the Sugar River, so we had a lot of floodplain, a lot of wetlands, a lot of environmental areas, um, labeling those appropriately um, and planning around those as well. And we'll do the same thing in the north neighborhood too, but this is just a map that would, would go into that planning process. And transportation, where we could put roads, uh, the main roads, uh, collector streets, um, just the general road layout uh, of how things could happen in this area as well. And this will also be going into the north neighborhood too. As I said before, the city does have five growth areas. Um, we've completed the, the two in the southeast and the southwest corner of the corners of the city in the green and the blue. Um, and the north neighborhood here is in, in yellow. And that's the area that we're going to be focusing on in the next few years. So uh, this is the north neighborhood. Uh, the, the approximate boundaries are from Country View Road on the west. Uh, it runs along High County Highway PD and then it approximately goes to the east to the city of Madison boundaries and then also the southern boundary is for the most part the, the city's northern border. Um, so that in a nutshell is, is the neighborhood. Um, we actually started the process about, about four or five years ago um, and we've kind of, it's kind of gotten slowed down because of road improvements. You know, we spent some time looking at what Epic was going to do. There's been some questions about what's going to happen at County Highway M and County Highway PD. Um, so this actually what you see before you was a, a previous rendition that was created and looking at some possible uses in the area. We obviously have some office uses, uh, uses out towards Epic. Uh, once again, we have residential uses, then we have a blue transition area, and then we have some commercial. So there has been a lot of legwork done in this in the past already. There's been a lot of work done that was, has been beneficial and will hopefully speed up this, this process. So a, a couple things that the point out of what's going to be happening in this neighborhood in at least the next uh, approximately four years. Uh, there's going to be some significant, yes? Can I just ask a question? So when we, when we think of the development of the north neighborhood, we don't, we don't include in that the, uh, the remaining We probably will. We probably will. Just and I, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't in a future slide. I actually I pick it up. I and now I see you, I did miss it on this one, but we we probably will because it is undeveloped. Um, so it would make sense to make a recommendation of what kind of development would be there. But this this slide does miss that. But there's a future one that does show it. So. Re regarding transportation, the next the next four years there'll be some significant transportation improvements in the area. Um, in 2015, Nine Mound Road is slated for improvements. Uh, most importantly, the intersection at Nine Mound and County Highway PD will be redone. Um, so that's the first significant transportation improvement. The second one is the County Highway M project that will most likely occur in 2016. Um, that will expand the roadway to three lanes in each direction, so six lanes total. Uh, the intersection here will have, uh, at PD and County Highway M, will have some significant improvements as, as well. I know the engineers are still working out the details of what those improvements will be, um, but that intersection will have a dramatic change to it. County Highway PD to the east uh, from that intersection to basically the, the top of the hill there. Uh, that will be expanded out to, to four lanes. And then in 2018, County Highway PD from the intersection going west to Nine Mound Road will be expanded to four lanes as well. Um, so we'll have a solid four years of, of reconstruction and road improvements in this area. Um, most important is going to be 2016 is that's when the, the actual sewer will be run down County Highway M. So it will provide sewer at that point to the, to the, the properties within the north, north neighborhood. Um, so that's kind of the, the key date there is, is 2016 when that project wraps up. Um, and I'll talk about this in a few more minutes, but 
2016 is kind of the magic number to kind of have our ducks in a row and be ready for development in that area because by 2016 hopefully that's when the the sewer will will be in place Adam, can you hold on that slide for yeah. just a minute uh, i just wanted to provide a, a couple other comments about the transportation improvements and the timing that we're looking at here uh, the improvement to Nine Mound Road would be a TIF district project. Uh, that's something that was contemplated in the original TIF district project plan. Uh, we've also had that in our budget. Uh, we are currently, um, our city engineer has been doing some survey work out there. Um, they're going to be putting together some preliminary designs and we're having some discussions with Epic about their future campus developments and how that would tie into some of the other improvements there. So that's something that we're hoping to bring forward uh, yet this year with some design so that we can go forward with any right-of-way acquisition and be in a position to construct that in 2015. Uh, for the County Highway M project, um, that has been talked about as a 2015-2016 a project. And uh, if you recall, there were three alternatives that the engineers were initially looking at for the intersection at M and PD. Uh, there was an enlarged traffic signal, um, a two-lane roundabout that would be expandable to a three-lane roundabout if needed, and then a grade-separated jug handle. And the preferred option that was selected by both the City of Verona and the City of Madison um, was the two-lane roundabout. As there have been additional uh, traffic studies, including the additional um, study that was done with the, the plans at EPIC, along with some changes in the federal highway standards for how they evaluate roundabouts, um, there are some concerns that the two-lane roundabout would not <coughs> meet demand and meet those standards by the design year looking 20 years out. And so that's kind of reopened this discussion of are there any alter other alternatives? Um, do we look at a roundabout that may need to be expanded to three lanes sooner or are there other options that are out there and the engineers that are working on this project um, are, are putting together some of those ideas uh, we actually have a meeting with them and staff at the city of madison tomorrow uh, hopefully to get a better understanding of what options are on the table the net result of all of that is we're probably going to be revisiting that intersection design and that's likely going to be pushing the time period back from a 2015-2016 construction to 2016, um, possibly trying to do that all as one project in 2016. And we'll follow up with additional information once we, we learn more after the meeting tomorrow. Uh, the other projects shown on the map, the improvements to County Highway PD in, in 2017 and 2018, um, those are projects that would need to be coordinated with county and uh, with the MPO uh, with available funding for those. I know EPIC is very interested in trying to do, especially the western portion of that project, sooner rather than later. Uh, I think staff, I, I would say, is, is in agreement with that. Uh, so that's something that we may want to continue having those discussions and see if there's any opportunity to try to move that project up from 2018. <clears throat> Go ahead, Adam. Yes. So with, with all that being said in transportation, we, we've kind of taken a, a quick look at potential land use in, in this area. Um, so the first, I guess, chunk of it, we've identified the western portion is probably most likely epic. Um, that would include office uses or expanding their solar area or just uh, uses associated with, with epic as, as their overall campus. Um, most likely the two existing quarries would remain as quarries, as open space. There's a church in the area. The church uh, is going to stay put, so the, the church use would remain the same. Now looking more into the, 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 the larger, more developable area of it, we have identified approximately 200 acres that I would probably call residential or more likely suburban residential. This would be your more typical uh, uh, two or three car garage homes. Um, you know, two to three thousand square foot homes, typical of what you see. I think that's Kettle, Kettle Creek to the, the south there. Um, typical of what you'd see there. You'd see the transition going north and also going west from this, this intersection as well. Um, at the intersection, uh, there's probably some commercial demand. You have a six lane highway there, along with a four lane highway going west, uh, east and west. So there will be commercial demand in that area. Um, and then we have what I would classify right now as a, as a transition area. Uh, this transition area is kind of where you're going to have a bunch of uses going on. You're going to have some probably some commercial uses. You might have some single family. You might have some multifamily. You might have some office. Um, and, you know, this is the area that my, myself, this is my, my personal thought, is if there ever was a spot in the city to, to consider a, a traditional neighborhood design, a TND development, and looking at some of that, uh, this transition area would, would be that area. 
um, and that'd be similar to something you'd see in, in Middleton Hills. Um, so creating a, a more of a transition as you go into that more of that suburban residential, looking at that of is there an opportunity to do some mixed use in there? Is there an op opportunity to have a, a theme to this project as well, um, similar to Middleton Hills? Um, and looking at that transition area as that kind of TND area where you can mix some uses together because the reality of this area of the neighborhood in, in the middle here is that there's really no transition point. It, it all just kind of goes together in some fashion. Uh, a lot of commercial areas are usually divided up in the, like, in the technology park and the Liberty Business Park. This, this neighborhood doesn't have that. So this transition area here will be kind of the important area to look at and seeing how all those uses, uses come together. A um, couple of more items here is the area is located within a closed basin. What that means is that the water does not drain from here. There is no natural outlet. It doesn't go to the Sugar Creek. It doesn't go to the Badger Mill Creek. It, it stays in this area. So this will be a regional stormwater facility in this area. Um, it'll be a larger facility as well. need to accommodate uh, most of the land in this area. So there will be a very large stormwater pond here. The school district has also <coughs> express some interest of having elementary school in this area. So that's another land use we'll have to work through. And finally, uh, we've identified a regional park in this area as well. Um, so looking at that and seeing where a, a park could be located too. This is just the initial kind of looking at what we have out there. Um, and the, the, only, the only real new thing from what has been discussed in the past was basically my idea of throwing out the, the TND idea in that transition area, of taking a look at that, seeing if that is, is feasible or if there's any interest in doing that or, or not. Thank you. Just a couple questions. Um, you had mentioned the possibility of, of a school, and I've, I've I've read the, the reports that the, the district is, is looking at the possibility of building another school, although I don't think they've come to that conclusion necessarily yet. My understanding was they're looking at a, a location on the north end of town and on the south end of town. Um, but I th if I understood you correctly, they've settled on the north end of town? A lot of the stuff on the north side of the the town would be depend dependent upon development in this area. So they've asked to see what kind of numbers that we would have, what we're projecting at the number of homes in this area as well. Um, they're anticipating they're probably going to need another elementary school within this north neighborhood. Uh, the area from the, the open space uh, on the western edge to the eastern point at County Highway M is approximately 270, 300 acres in that area. Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot of land to cover. Um, so they're looking at it from the standpoint they may, they, they may need that as a future elementary school to service this neighborhood and possibly anything else that's occurring in Madison to the, to the north and west. Then a, another question, Have, has the city been approached by any of the landowners who are interested in developing this land? Uh, I mean, I know that the landowner that owns the property that is designated as commercial on here is is if he gets the right price interested in selling it for commercial but the, in the transition area are they are, are there property owners who are interested in selling and developing it as a traditional neighborhood design or is that just something you kind of came up with as thinking that would be a good idea you know that the TND idea actually initially came from a uh, Dennis Midtoon's uh, planner that he's working with, he actually threw it out to me initially. And I, I initially said, well, I don't, I don't know about it. And the more, I, the more I actually thought about it, the more I thought, well, if there's one spot in the city that this could work, it, it'd be this area. And the, re the only reason I say that is that usually those types of developments fail because you don't have the commercial demand to it. You, you basically, you, you try to put commercial in where you shouldn't be putting commercial into it. Due to the traffic counts and the you know being so close to Epic and the size of the roads, I, this it would work from a commercial standpoint. If there's a way you could possibly tie that in and look at that, I think I, I think it's something worthwhile at least take a look at and see if it's if it's feasible and um, and, and and whatnot. But I like I said, initially came from Dennis Midtoon's uh, person that he works with. I know Dennis is interested in, in selling the property. I know there's an agent here tonight representing a different property owner in the area as well. 
I think most of the property owners in that area, excluding uh, I think Tony Hendricks in the south there, are interested in, in selling in some fashion. Mr. Burns? Yeah, just a comment going back to the previous question about the school sites. Uh, it's my understanding the school is, is potentially looking at, at two sites, both one on the north and one on the south. Uh, they wouldn't be developing those at the same time, but I think if they're looking at uh, the future development in the south, at Cathedral Point, Scenic Ridge, as well as, as Adam had indicated, um, the north neighborhood is a very large area. And just looking at the amount of development and potentially the amount of residential that could be up there, that in their planning for the future, they at least wanted to um, consider sites in, in both locations. Um, I also just wanted to add uh, about the, the comment about the, the land uses. Um, that as Adam had indicated, uh, we'd be looking as part of uh, finalizing this planning process, uh, be getting into some additional detail so that rather than just list commercial on the corner or, or residential, I think it's important to have that discussion about what type of commercial area do we see this as? What do we think would fit here? Um, what would tie in with the neighborhood? Um, trying to identify what would be areas that are appropriate for single family or multi multi-family and levels of density. Um, this is going to be the city's northern gateway. I think it's, it gives us an opportunity to really think about the character and type of neighborhood we would wa want to have here, types of land uses. And while we don't want to take this to try to get down to specifically what the exact development is, I think there is an opportunity to try to define it a little bit further here, um, which I think would be beneficial. And that's that's part of the taking it from where it has been worked on in the past that we hope to, to work on over the next few months. Mr. Manley? Thank you. I, um, <clears throat> I guess just one thing I would ask the city council to consider as the, the planning for this area evolves is um, if, we're, if we're looking at the area south of Highway PD, wherever, I mean, you, you've, we've got some of it on, on this map that's white that says residential and some of it that's orange that says transition and, and some of it that's red that says commercial. But um, the, the, that area, that whole area immediately adjacent to Highway PD is going to be um, incredibly desirable for commercial development. And we as a city could probably maximize our tax base in uh, of that land immediately adjacent to Highway PD as commercial. Um, and I bring that up for two reasons. N number one, and we're gonna get to a discussion about boundary agreements and whether or not we should renew boundary agreements with the city of, of Madison. And uh, as we currently have it, the first 300 feet is off limits. And I think that makes no sense. And I think that's against the city's interest. The other th point I want to make is that if, if the school district is interested in locating a an elementary school in an area where there's already an elementary school um, nearby, I would encourage the city to not put it in, not put a non, essentially a tax exempt property in an area where we have highly developable, high value, high tax base property. I guess in other words, if, if there's an area where an elementary school needs to go in the North neighborhood, I would encourage the city to think about locating that in an area that isn't the prime commercial development because that really, in my judgment, is a misuse of, of land that has a much better tax generating potential for the city. Mr. Bear? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, so I, I guess is the vision then, Mr. Manley, to have sort of a, you know, a, a strip of red along PD, a strip of red along M? rather than the, the large square that's here now, or both? Yeah, I guess my, my pitch would be, would be yes. I mean, and I'm not necessarily saying change the, you know, residential, trans, you know, transitional commercial, but, but yeah, I would say that the, the areas immediately adjacent to Highway PD, um, at a minimum Highway PD, if not also Highway, um, Highway M should be commercial. And I, I think, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think there's th those are good, compelling arguments, and and likely the property 
next to a four lane highway is not as desirable for residential. It'd probably have lower uh, property values. That may be where uh, this transition could take place. I mean, you could even stretch the, a strip of transition behind that commercial because you don't necessarily want to have residential right behind uh, commercial as well. So if, if that's the vision, and I think that, that there are compelling arguments for that, that I would want to see that transition also occur so that you don't have commercial right next to residential. Just again, to improve those property values, make them more desirable. Okay, other, Mr. Manley? Yeah, and I, I guess I would just add on to Mr. Bear's comments that a, a, an elementary school might be a good transition between commercial development and a traditional neighborhood or some other type of residential use. Mm -hmm. Other comments? No? Adam? Yeah, just to pick up on a couple of points. I, th I think that transition area is going to be the key area, you know, regardless of what uses, you know, it's separating, but that transition area is going to be the key, making sure that whatever happens in there, it's it's, it's got to be a smooth transition, not where you see elsewhere, where you see commercial and you just see something kind of just, I don't want to say dumped there, but um, it's trying to find that use that fits and a school is actually a pretty good example or maybe a park or something as well so uh, trying to flush out those details what we can do and it's kind of bill indicated as well one of the things we do want to really make sure in this plan is also identify those multifamily areas we want to identify single family areas ahead of time and recommend those densities ahead of time as well you know one of the things that we've we've done at the plan commission lately we've spent a lot of time talking about where multifamily should go, where should single family go, what kinds of developments. If we, if we can put more certainty into this plan as well, it'll make those decisions in the future a lot easier too. So um, from a staff perspective, we're gonna try to put as much detail, detail as we can into this. So um, when projects do come forward, that they'll hopefully go smoother and quicker for you know, staff, developers, and, and the council and planning commission as well. So I guess the, what, what's, what we've completed so far in this is that we actually have, I have most of the background done looking at existing uses, conditions that are out there, features, uh, stormwater. Um, a lot of the stormwater information has been completed as well. That was completed a couple of years ago um, by one of the principal landowners in the neighborhood. Um, so the majority of the, of the background information is done. The, the, the big thing that's missing is the future land use component to it. Um, that, that has not been finalized. So that's where we're gonna need to spend our our time in the next couple months completing that. And once again, looking at that of the commercial office, residential, institutional, we're going to work with the school district on identifying a site um, that will fit their needs, also fitting the needs of the city, making sure we're putting it in the right location as well, um, making that blend with the neighborhood and not, not be, you know, be, make sure, making sure it's located in the correct area. Uh, we'll need to finalize the stormwater details. We, we have, like I said, most of that done. There's a few technical details that need to be completed on that, but um, we'll have to put the finishing touches on those. And then we'll also need to work on the phasing and the integration with transportation improvements, and that's with the improvements at County Highway M and PD, and also looking at the access points coming off of County Highway M and off of County Highway PD, because those are going to be critical for developers and future development in the area. So the process that I, I kind of see this going as is, you know, first thing we have to do is uh, finalize that County Highway M and County Highway PD intersection. Um, that will hopefully be, be done within the next month or two. Um, if there's interest from the council, uh, consider the hiring of a consultant to look at that T and D component for that transition area. Um, what that would include is having someone come in, take a look at the area. And my recommendation also would be to have that person create design guidelines for this neighborhood right now. And then we'd actually put those in the plan. Um, so crafting the language for design of how buildings will look, if there's a theme in this area, if there's a certain type of architectural standard that we want all buildings to meet or commercial or non-residential, uh, placing that in the plan right now. So we have that as a tool ahead of time that we can make sure this is a high quality development and we can hopefully head off future debates in the, in the future in, when, they, when they occur when development comes in um, we'd also once we have a draft done we need to sit down with the landowners uh, make sure they're comfortable with what we're doing out there um, and make any necessary changes that you know are they may raise some issues and working with them on whatever issues may come up have a public review of the document as well um, and then we'd have plan commission review and recommendation to the council and ultimately we'd have common council review and approval Ideally, this would be done uh, by summer. So it's, it's important to get this project moving along quicker. 
Um, Adam, I'm wondering, do you have uh, <coughs> or have you ever seen data uh, in other areas where they've done the traditional neighborhoods to see what final prices of that type of development is compared to other single family homes? Uh, one of the things that I'm hearing is that people are concerned that if we move forward with TND, uh, uh, traditional neighborhoods, that the cost of those homes aren't going to be a lot less expensive. You know, uh, people think that they will be a lot less expensive, but in the end that they really aren't. And I'm wondering if you've ever seen any data or if you believe that there's data out there that we could take a look at that. I have not seen any data myself. I think there might be some out there. I, I think the challenge with the city of Rona right now is that we just don't have much single family housing. Um, you have the largest private employer in Dane County. You have a, a great school system that people want to want to live here. They want to be here. They're safe here. Um, you have a lot of positive things going for the city right now, and it's. Uh, I, I think even even if you put you know smaller houses in this area or whatever they may be, um, the demand is probably going to outstrip the supply, and because people want to be here. Uh, but I, I think there may be some studies out there. I think you know Milton Hills is probably not the best example. Obviously, that's a different project, and those those homes in there are quite high end. Um, you have Smith's Crossings in in some prairie. You have uh, Grandview Commons in Madison. There's been a lot of these done out west and the south as well. But I could I could see if I could pull some data on that. But um, I would just caution with any project that right like I said right now supply is the issue. And I think even if you open this up, this, this, when, when this neighborhood opens up, uh, there will be an incredible demand for people to live here. You're approximately one mile from Epic, and you can be in the Verona School District. Uh, families are going to want to live there. People working at Epic are going to want to live there. Um, there's going to be a lot of demand. So uh, just important to remember that he, I, I can show a study, but I, I, think, I don't think I would call it affordable by any means. It, you know, I think it's just going to be wherever the market dictates. Mr. Manley? I'm going to agree with that, and I, and I really agree with the demand uh, piece of it. I, I can tell you that w the people in my neighborhood are constantly asking me, because our neighborhood, if you're, if you're familiar with the Kettle Creek neighborhood, it's it's starter homes, and you know we a lot of us built a starter home and started having kids and found out that a two-car garage isn't enough or that three bedrooms isn't enough and want a larger home but love the the neighborhood so much and love the elementary school so much that we we want to move somewhere else but we don't want to move far and and so I think that there will be incredibly high demand um, and whenever there's high demand, there's typically higher prices. But I guess my the the question I would ask of you, Adam, is if if you know, or if you can give an idea, because I'll I'll have neighbors who are going to be incredibly disappointed in me if I can't <laughs> answer the most frequent question I get, which is when is that area going to develop north of of Country View Elementary School? And I, I don't know if we're any closer to answering that question at this point but if you have any insight I know people would would love to know what it is it's it's a question I hear uh, qu quite often and that's the property if you're not familiar with it located next to our just north of our water tower in that area it's approximately 80 acres owned by Tony Heinrichs it's actually within the urban service area right now and it's actually in the city too uh, the challenge with that property is a, a large majority of it drains into that closed basin. Um, so what makes it difficult to develop that is that uh, the, the northern half of that property is going to drain to the north down into that large basin that I showed on the screen here. Um, so the developer is kind of caught between doing a lot of stormwater on his own property that is going to cost a lot of money or waiting until that basin is developed. Um, once that basin goes in, um, you should be ready to go. But the basin is what's holding it up, and I think there's also an issue with possibly a lift station out there, too. So you have a couple things going on, but um, I, I get that question quite often, too, of when is that going to happen. And I, I don't have a date, but I know once 2016 comes around and that stormwater basin is developed, I, I feel a lot more comfortable about giving a, a better answer. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Yours? 
thank you. Uh, you know, I understand that um, you know the market's going to drive the price of the homes, and that's why I, as we move into the north neighborhood and we look at multifamily, I don't want to forget about senior housing, um, because I think not only does that offer an opportunity for seniors to stay in Verona longer, but I think it also offers an opportunity to um, offer young families a more diverse housing stock. Um, and it's a way that we can possibly work to get both ends of the spectrum. Maybe add in some high-end homes, while at the same time offering young families that opportunity to buy their first home um, and also live within the city limits and in the Verona School District. Other comments? Mr. Baer? I, I just have a question going back a couple slides to your map that has the yellow outline. Um, on, on slides even before this, there were some plans for the area east of Highway M. Um, can you talk quickly about that area north of the soccer park over to over to M? Sure, I, I did kind of gloss over that. That's an area we're, we're going to be looking at as well. A large chunk of that is is wooded right now and will most likely be slated for um, open space conservation area. Uh, it abuts the Ice Age Trail. Um, but there would be, we would be looking at some areas on the east side, side of County Highway M. Um, we've, we've considered that as commercial in the past, some of those areas, also along County Highway PD. Um, I, I honestly haven't given it much thought, but that might be reasonable. It would make some sense. Um, regarding the area around Redden, um, once again, haven't, haven't given much thought to it yet, but uh, most likely looking at a, uh, either residential use in there would be a continuation of what you see to the west. Um, or a possible expansion of Redden at some point if they're ever interested. Mr. Manley? Thank you. I, I just want to uh, not respond, but just react to the comments that, that Mr. Yours just made, um, because I think we all acknowledge that multifamily, there's an important, plays an important role. Um, we have approved a significant of multifamily lately including senior housing and I think that every single development in our city doesn't have to be oh we've got to have a senior housing component there I mean we're we, we just approved I can't remember how many units on the other side of highway M that are going to be specifically designated for senior housing I think at at some point you we have to stop trying to be the planners who dictate every single type of, of, of housing stock and every single type of housing use and just kind of let the market decide and the people who actually want to purchase property decide what kind of land uses and intensities there should be. And I'm afraid that if we get too prescriptive with, well, let's make sure we've got senior housing here and let's have big condos here and let's have large houses here and small houses here. That's just not the way development works. And I don't think it's to our advantage as a city um, to try and shoehorn uses in that maybe don't fit and maybe don't align with what buyers in the marketplace want. Mr. Yers? You know, just to kind of quickly respond to that, <clears throat> the senior development at Prairie Oaks, um, a large portion of that is going to be taken up by memory care, uh, which isn't overlooked. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts about that project um, is that it does offer that. Um, and to say that every neighborhood in Verona has senior housing, I think, is taking a step too far. Um, and I think we need to make sure we're taking care of every population in the city. And I mean, no, we don't need to say this section here is going to have larger homes, this section here is going to have smaller homes. Um, but I think we, we need to make a conscious effort to make sure that people who want to live in Verona can live in Verona. Um, you know, we are a growing city, and as we just went through the budget, you know, I heard seniors say, you know, taxes are going up. I don't know how long I'm going to stay in my home, but I love this community. Um, I think we should have enough housing available f for seniors who want to stay in Verona who don't necessarily want the upkeep of a home anymore. Um, and I think that's the type of vision that needs to come from a common council. Um, 
but also let the market do its work as well. And uh, so I, 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 I don't think we should uh, be completely laissez-faire on the topic. Mr. Diaz? Thank you. I just wanted to say I, I, I would fully support hiring a consultant to examine the feasibility of a, a T and D component in the neighborhoods. I think uh, it's kind of interesting housing stock, and, and if that's a good location for it, then I would I would fully support it. I guess to to respond to the mayor's earlier comment about affordabilities, in just a little bit of quick searching I've done online, actually there's there's some thought that it might actually people might actually pay a premium for T and D housing, so it might not even be a matter of it costing not as less as people think, but it might end up actually costing more than some suburban housing. But I would still like to see it um, explored in that neighborhood. I think I don't <clears throat> speak for my colleagues at Epic, but I, I kind of get the impression that that would go over really well. Well, certainly there needs to be a, a balance in, in the type of housing that's available, but we hear a lot about affordable housing. And <clears throat> I can tell you from experience, if if there's a demand, which we have a demand for single family homes, we're not gonna see the prices of those houses go down. The prices of those houses are gonna go up and uh, so are the taxes. So we need to have a balance uh, very clearly, at least from what I'm hearing from people, is that there's not enough single family and there's not enough more high end single family homes. And that's what people are looking for. So, but there needs to be a balance and that's what we need to work through. Other questions, otherwise we'll let uh, Mr. Sir, proceed. Did you have something, Bill? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Sir. <clears throat> so once once the actual planning process is completed, the next uh, thing that we have to do is look at our urban service area, which is called our USA. Um, these are areas that are served by sewer and water. Uh, the service area is controlled by the DNR, and they contract with the Capital Area Regional <coughs> Planning Commission, which is also known as, as CARPC. So we have USA and, and CARPC, those are the terms they'll be using. Um, CARPC reviews and improves all USA amendments. Uh, you look at water quality standards to make sure that we're meeting the necessary water quality standards uh, from a stormwater standpoint. Um, and these service areas need to be amended prior to development starting. So you can't actually start development in these areas until we, we amend the USA. The USA process is uh, a three-step process. First, we have to complete the plan. Uh, that's one of the things that the Regional Planning Commission looks at when they complete their USA review. We have to finalize those stormwater details, and like I said before, a lot of those details have been completed, but we have to put the finishing touches on those. And then we would submit to the to CARPC to, to start the review. Um, the review can can be short or can be long. I mean, I think there's a long long history with the city and, and CARPC, but um, you know, I think part of the thing that we need to do well in the North Neighborhood Plan is to provide that detail and hopefully get most of those questions answered in that in that planning process in the neighborhood plan. Um, but that the USA amendment process would would occur after the the finalization of the of the North Neighborhood Plan. Um, I see the USA process starting this year. Um, I think that's something we need to to begin in in 2014, um, just to make sure that we we can complete it by 2016. Um, once again, 2016 is going to be the key date to making sure the neighborhood plan is wrapped up and the urban service area for that area is wrapped up as well. Um, we need to be ready for development to occur once that sewer line gets run down that road. Um, so my recommendation is once we get the plan done, would be to start looking at our USA amendment to, to CARPC. Mr. Manley? If I could just offer a, a suggestion to staff, and I, and I agree with you, Adam, I think that given the length of time that it's taken to get these reviewed in the past, it does make sense to start now. I would just um, offer the suggestion that maybe you begin um, looping in Department of Natural Resources staff at the front end so that they're kind of familiar with, they ultimately have the statutory obligation to approve the the urban service areas, even the CARPSI's role is, is merely a recommendation to the DNR and I think that to the extent that we can bring DNR staff um, from the water division in at the front end and keep them apprised of everything we're proposing and any modifications we make every step of the way that would probably help in the long run. 
I'm also optimistic with this one since it is in a closed basin. You know, the water isn't, it's not draining out to the Sugar River, it's not draining out to the Badger Mill Creek. From a water quality standpoint, the water all stays there. So I'm, I'm more, more optimistic, I guess, that in, in this area that it would be a smoother process than it, than it has been in the past. I, have, I have totally agree and I appreciate that sentiment, but in the past, water quality hasn't really been at the forefront of the decision making at CARPSI. You know, we heard the, well, I don't think this is a good place for a health care facility comment, which didn't have anything to do with water quality. It had to do with a non Verona resident's vision for what Verona should look like. That's why I say get the DNR involved sooner rather than later. Other comments? I concur with Mr. Manley. Mr. Sir? So finally, the last, uh, last slide I have is just, this is our existing uh, USA area. So in the red is the city of Verona boundaries. Uh, the black line, which excludes the uh, Heinrichs property, but um, is in general the north neighborhood area. And then the blue shaded area is our existing USA or urban service area. Um, you know, I think once we once we get the plan done, um, we probably have some conversation with the council of you know what areas would we want to bring in um, and, and have that conversation at that point. But in general, right now, um, pretty much none of the north neighborhood is in that urban service area. So we will we'll have to work through that uh, once the plan is completed. Other comments, questions. Bill, anything to add? Uh, maybe just a brief comment on, on the timeline. Um, you know, I, I agree with Adam. Uh, we talked about this prior to the, the meeting that we want to be moving on the North Neighborhood Plan. Um, there are still some open questions. The, the exact um, configuration of the intersection at, at PDNM is probably something we're going to be looking at coming up. Um, but we feel that we, that we need to get this process uh, wrapped up. And so I, I think the next step, um, starting to work on, on detail within the land use, working with the school district, working with Park Commission, um, take a look at, at this uh, T and D um, consultant to see the feasibility looking at tax base there try to answer all those questions by this summer um, then our next step will be coming back talking about the urban service area going through that process um, and ultimately the timeline that we're trying to operate under is to have everything in place by the end of 2015 so that in 2016 when when the improvements are in place that we won't be in a position to go forward um, so tonight, this was just kind of an introduction, bring everyone up to speed. Um, I appreciate the feedback that's helpful for us, and, and we'll be in contact as, as we continue to work on the plan over the next few months. Thank you. All right, we'll uh, proceed here with the agenda. Bill, are you taking the lead on this? Uh, yes, and actually, if we can switch back to the, the uh, presentation, we can pick up from there. And we have some slides related to the uh, city's existing agreement with the city of Madison uh, for the, the PD area. Uh, the agreement uh, between the city of Madison and the city of Verona was entered into in July of 1996. Uh, covers three to four main topics. Uh, one of them we don't have, have listed here is establishment of, of an open corridor. And looking back at that slide that Adam was going through with the forested area and where Redden Soccer is, a lot of that's been um, discussed already, trying to, to preserve areas within the Ice Age Trail corridor within Madison. Um, the three main provisions that are, are, I'd say, most relevant today are first this um, buffer concept around M and PD. Uh, that agreement spells out that 1,000 feet in either direction, uh, north, south, east, west from that intersection, uh, that there would be a buffer. Uh, the desire at the time of the agreement was to have a community separation so that there would be a distinction when somebody's leaving Madison and coming into Verona or vice versa. And that agreement calls for a 300 foot wide buffer along both roads. Uh, if you're familiar with that area, if you go east on Highway PD, um, there's the McKee Clinic, and that is set back um, a distance from the road. Um, there's a berm in that area trying to provide some screening. I believe in that case, the, the, the building is set back, if I, I recall correctly, 300 feet, although there is a parking lot and some other development within that area. Is that correct? I think it's about 150, 200. Okay. But yeah. So, so at that time, they, they did push the building back, and they also created the berm. And 
as Adam and I were having discussions about the, the North neighborhood and about this agreement, um, our, our thought was perhaps that's not the, the best alternative. Maybe there are other alternatives, and, and we'll go through a few of those in just a moment here. Um, but that's certainly one topic for discussion. Uh, the agreement establishes a five points planning area, uh, which is basically a, a joint planning review for City of Madison and City of Rona in this area. So if we have development uh, within our portion of the area, uh, Madison would be provided the opportunity to comment on it. And likewise for development in Madison in this area, that would come to, to City of Rona for feedback. And then the, the final piece is establishing a jurisdictional boundary. And this agreement sets the boundary between the two communities as County Highway PD. Uh, south of PD would be the city of Verona. And this agreement extends west to Shady Oak Lane. And farther west from that is not covered by the agreement. So with this agreement coming up, that's one of the points of, of discussion for us, uh, of our feelings of that. Um, and we'll, we'll go into that in, in a little bit more detail in just a moment here. Um, so the current agreement, uh, excuse me, uh, it was a 20-year agreement, uh, so that's going to be expiring in July of 2016. Uh, it also has a provision that it's renewed automatically for an additional 20 years unless either party notifies the other one year in advance of its intention not to renew. So that's going to be coming up in the middle of 2015, uh, which is why this is timely that we start discussing this now and what we would like to see with this agreement and, and have those conversations with the City of Madison. On the topic of the uh, boundary, uh, this is an aerial photo um, looking at um, Highway PD on, uh, north of Verona and into the city of Madison. And these are the uh, section lines. Uh, so PD would be following the section line on the eastern portion of this map, and then PD curves to the south and then uh, heads directly east-west again and then starts to curve to the south again. So this is the area that is covered by the agreement currently, um, going to approximately Shady Oak Lane with City of Madison to the north and City of Rona to the south. And then this is an area that was discussed as part of the consolidation um, discussions between the city and, and town of Verona. There were also discussions with the city of Madison at that time. And at least on some of the, the discussions, uh, we were able to, to locate maps that identified this area as a potential boundary agreement discussion uh, with the city of Madison. Um, that, that agreement was, was never finalized. Obviously, the consolidation discussions did not go for, forward. So at this point, uh, we do not have any formal agreement west of, of Shady Oak Lane. Uh, I believe City of Madison, um, my impression from, from communications with their staff is that they are interested in uh, renewing this agreement or having a revision of this agreement and further defining that boundary area to the west. Um, I believe in their planning process, they are looking at County Highway PD continuing to be the boundary between the two communities, and that's one of the items for, for discussion um, this evening. Bill, and I'll just <clears throat> I'll add to the, in, in the discussions during the merger and consolidation uh, conversations was there was, there was a, an agreement in concept with the City of Madison. Mm -hmm. uh, they just wanted to wait until the final vote happened um, on the on the consolidation of merger because it didn't happen and didn't move forward. Um, you know, we didn't proceed with that boundary agreement, but there was an agreement in concept. Yep. Mr. Manley. I can certainly appreciate that the city of Madison would want to claim everything north of Highway PD as being the city of Madison. Uh, but I think one could make an argument that that land, which is currently the town of Verona, has more of a community of interest with the city of Verona than it does the city of Madison. And I think we should keep that mind, in mind to the extent that we get into boundary agreement discussions with either municipality in the future. Thank you. Mr. Burns? The next portion of the agreement uh, relating to the, the buffer, and, and as I had mentioned, uh, Adam and I, at least in our discussions, had, had looked at this and thought that perhaps wide areas of, of empty space or, or a berm is, is not the best way to accomplish that. Perhaps there's something else we want to accomplish at, at that intersection area. Um, some of the alternatives, uh, one would be to just eliminate the buffer requirement completely. 
Uh, another would be to reduce the, the depth of the buffer instead of 300 feet, bringing it down to 100 or 150 feet. And to some extent, that, that's what was done with the, uh, the Meritor Clinic that was out there that, that is a, a reduction from the 300 feet. Uh, measuring it from the center line of the roadway, which would essentially have the same effect of shortening up that area. Um, allowing things like stormwater ponds, uh, which would be open space and green space, uh, to be included in there. Um, or the last idea, which is to use streetscaping or landscaping to highlight the community boundaries. And personally, I, I think there's some merit to exploring that idea, especially uh, as we look at what we want the character of this area to be in Verona. We may want to do something to have that be a very high quality uh, development, uh, make it distinct so that people know that they're entering the city of Verona, and perhaps we can use um, architectural elements, streetscaping, landscaping, to create that feeling that people are, are leaving Madison and entering into a unique area uh, without just having um, a wide area of open green space that, that may not be the most effective. Uh, the other piece related to this discussion is that if there are changes to what that intersection looks like at M and PD, in particular if we end up looking at some options that would have um, grade separation or, or different ramps, I think that could have a big impact on, on what is planned here. If you have a, a roundabout um, that you may want to have a different type of, of, of buffer or distinction between the communities rather than if you had a, a larger structure, um, something similar to, to what's going in at, at M and Mineral Point right now. And we don't know those details yet, so it's, it's a little bit hard to have this discussion, but uh, we may want to at least um, you know, let Madison know that we are interested in looking at some alternatives. And, and, and staff have talked about that, but at this point we have not talked about uh, that with, with uh, the council in any depth or, or with elected officials in Madison. And that's a, a conversation that I think we may want to have as we start to work on what this agreement is going to look like. Uh, we, I, I guess at this point, yeah, we do have a, a closed session later this evening if, if people would like to discuss um, the agreement in, in further detail as it relates to negotiations. But if there's any questions or, or comments appropriate for open session, um, this would be appropriate before we transition to the town of Verona. Mr. Diaz? Thank you. I just had a quick, quick question for Adam. Um, does the buffer zone interfere with the North Neighborhood Plan? And if so, how much? Does, does it interfere, you said, with the, the planning? Yeah, does it interfere? With the process or the actual development of the With thing? the actual plan. I know we're not, we don't have the plan yet, but. I, I, th I think, it, I think it, it does because it's a question mark of what, what can and cannot be done in that area. I mean, my recommendation on the, on the alternatives has from the get-go been just eliminate the requirement, number one, and then look at streetscaping and landscaping throughout the area. Uh, you see that done in Milwaukee. You see that done in other are areas of the, of the state as well, and it works out quite well. Um, the, the, the challenge that what it does the plan is that <coughs> it's located on, at, at the intersection there so the intersections are usually the, the with the highest visibility and greatest potential for development as well so it in my opinion a buffer the, this requirement is going to probably hurt development in the future by by having that in place um, I, I think there's better ways you can do it I think you can make things look better than trying to hide it I think what the buffer does is hide it and try to put a a facade on that you know there's a, a boundary between the two cities well there isn't I mean I think that you can create that boundary by, <coughs> excuse me by making it look nicer by making it look distinctive compared to you know uh, the two communities but um, it, it does slow the planning planning process but it's also tied into the transportation component as well you know part of the reason that our discussions with Madison regarding this haven't gone haven't gone forward is we're waiting to see what comes out of this intersection design because um, as Bill kind of indicated, if, it, if a roundabout doesn't happen and it goes to something more structured, like, well, the conversation with Madison staff has been, you know, is is there a better way we should be looking at this, and not not <coughs> as a buffer, or does it just go away altogether? So, uh, you know, I, I don't think it impacts the planning process because it is tied into that transportation component. But if the buffer stays in place from a development standpoint, I think it will impact development. Other questions or comments? Anything else you want to discuss in open session on the boundary agreements? If not, um, we could go into closed session if there's a... Actually, go, go ahead, we have Excuse me. Uh, we do have a, a little bit of more information that, that we wanted to go through in the presentation related to um, the town of Verona. Okay, and perhaps ahead. we could do that and then go into closed if that's the desire with, with sure. both topics together. Go ahead. Uh, 
Um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get things started here and, and please jump in if, uh, if you have thoughts or, or comments. Uh, related to the town of Verona, uh, we have an extraterritorial jurisdiction, uh, which is referred to as the ETJ. In general, that is uh, one and a half miles from the city border. And to the east and the north, uh, that may differ from 1.5 miles because of agreements with those other communities. And generally, the line is going to be in the middle of, of where Verona and Madison uh, would be with respect to the town of Verona. And what that er extraterritorial jurisdiction allows us to do is to review land divisions within that extraterritorial jurisdiction area. And that gives the city additional control over future growth areas because we have the ability to review and potentially limit land divisions, which could make it difficult for the city to grow into those areas in the future. Uh, so that, that power is available by state statute. Uh, following the, the consolidation effort, which did not go forward, the city adopted an ordinance that limited land divisions in the ETJ area to lots of 35 acres. And there are some provisions that lots larger than that can do one split for the purpose of creating a single home. And that was basically an effort to um, help protect those future growth areas since consolidation was not moving forward. Um, we showed the slide earlier that, that showed different growth areas in all directions and the city wanted the ability to be able to preserve those and not have a lot of um, large lot town development ringing the city that would prohibit the city from growing into those areas in the future. Uh, this slide just shows, again, those, those growth areas. Um, so these would be the, the primary areas that we're talking about um, as top priorities for um, limiting development um, or land splits in, in the town that could prohibit the ability of the city to grow into those areas in the future. And then this next slide is, is a map uh, that was put together for the town of Verona. And Adam's passing out larger copies because it's a little bit hard to, to read on, on the screen here. The print gets pretty small. Uh, but the town of Verona had, had approached um, staff at, at the city some time ago and indicated that they were interested in talking about a potential uh, boundary agreement uh, since the consolidation uh, move did not go forward. And we had asked them um, to put together some ideas of, of where they are in their planning process, uh, what their thoughts are for areas uh, where they potentially would like to see additional development um, or areas where they may be asking for the city to relax it, its ETJ authority in, in allowing for land splits. And on this map, uh, the orange lines represent uh, the city's ETJ boundary. So to the east, uh, that line uh, moves back and forth uh, to the midpoint between the city of Rona and the city of Fitchburg. Um, looking at the south and west, it's more of a bubble line showing approximately where one and a half miles is from the city's current boundary. And to the north, um, the ETJ limit follows County Highway PD due to the agreement with Madison. So you can see that most of the town is impacted either by the city of Verona town, or city of Madison or city of Fitchburg ETJ areas with the exception of areas in the very southwest corner of the town. And that, that limits the amount of land divisions, potential development in the town. Um, just to point out a couple other items um, on this map that, that we received, uh, the town has identified areas in yellow as potential development as rural homes in the future. So there's some areas on the west uh, along the uh, Sugar River corridor. Uh, southwest and to the south, uh, again, following the Sugar River. And then south, uh, uh, actually it's north and south of Sunset Drive, um, south of where the city's um, development is with Scenic Ridge and Cathedral Point, and then in the southeast. And they have also identified commercial um, areas for rural commercial development, potentially along 18151, and potential for redevelopment in the Nesbitt Road corridor. Uh, I guess as we, we take a look at this, and, and perhaps some of this discussion may be appropriate in closed session as we talk about our, our strategy in approaching this, but. Um, I think this is, these are areas where we would want to have a conversation of what we see as, as the future growth area for the city, um, how soon we anticipate that, that that growth may occur, and then what types of development we would like to see on our boundaries. And, and one in particular, looking at the, the rural commercial along 18151, uh, we had raised the, the question to the, the town of, I'm not sure exactly what type of development that would be, uh, what would be uh, appropriate and, and could be developed on 
uh, lack of, of city sewer and facilities, and obviously the concern of, of appearance in that area as you're approaching the, the western portion of the city, um, Epic, uh, gateway into the city of Verona. Uh, so I think there's a lot of areas where we have some, some questions, but probably some areas for future discussion as well. You know, one of the most common questions I usually get is from people in the town. They get about a, two or three a month from people in the town asking to subdivide their property, and the answer usually is, is no because of our policy in place. And that's, I, I think, from a town perspective, that their interest is, is having us look at that ETJ uh, ordinance because I know they want to have, as you can indicate in the yellow here, they want to have uh, some, some land splits and land divisions within the town. Um, so the, the town has asked us the question, and, one, and the reason this map came about was we said, well, you know, if you want us to take a look at our, our policy, we'd, we'd like to see what your growth intentions are, what, what areas are you, are you looking at for, for future growth. So that's where this, this map came about, because I, I think there's a concern at the town level, and I'm speaking for them, but um, the perception I've gotten from the administrator there is that uh, the concern is that the, the city's ETJ policy is, is restricting their, their land divisions and um, they're, they're trying to move something forward for their residents there to, to allow them land splits and to subdivide lots off of uh, existing parcels. So that's the whole reason I think behind part of the conversation that town would like us to have is to take a look at that policy um, and see if there's any leeway in, in that policy so they can have more land divisions. Burns? Yeah, last item I wanted to walk through <coughs> is just some of the potential areas that could be addressed in a boundary agreement with the town. Uh, should we want to, to enter into those discussions? Uh, a boundary agreement uh, could potentially allow for greater control of uses and development with areas within the town. Uh, it, there's potential that that could get into more detail than just what the city can do uh, through its ETJ authority. Uh, through a boundary agreement, you could potentially allow for temporary town islands if there are some areas uh, that we would like to see coming into the city, um, but that would create an island in the town that can be addressed. Um, it allows for the potential an, uh, attachment of property. Uh, if there are individual property owners that may be unwilling or uninterested to annex into the city, but it makes sense um, from a provision of services from both the city and the town uh, for those properties to come in after a certain period of time, that can be addressed. Uh, it provides a comprehensive review and framework um, for addressing future boundaries and ultimately um, would provide certainty for, for the city and, and for town residents to know what the, the long-term plan is of each municipality. So those are, are some of the, the general topics um, that potentially could be looked at. Mr. Manley? <clears throat> just, a, just a couple of comments. One, uh, on, the, um, on the ETZ issue, um, I guess it doesn't surprise me that you're getting calls from some of the, the, the folks in the, in the town of Verona. I know that your, your, your predecessor was a strong proponent of the extraterritorial zoning restrictions. It was his feeling that after the town rejected consolidation after the city overwhelmingly supported it, that that the ETZ gave the city a, a better tool to manage its own future growth by having a say of what future growth or what growth in the in the township would look like. I think that's something to to, to certainly keep in consideration. Um, the the other uh, question I have for you, you I recall at one time that there were town of Verona property owners living north of Highway PD and west of Shady Oak who in the past had expressed some interest in being annexed into the city of Verona and I wonder if we're still as a city hearing from property owners in that portion of the township that might be interested in in coming into the city. Mr. Sir? Sure. Re regarding the, it's actually the ETJ policy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, so the land, there's a land division review process, also a zoning process that can be done extra territory. So it's actually the, the land division process. And I, I do believe that is a, a, a tool to be used. So I, for the most part, agree with what, what Bruce had done in the past as well. Um, regarding the property owners uh, north of County Highway PD, I have, I have not spoken to any myself. Um, so I've, I've been here about a year, and I haven't talked to anybody in that area. I'm not sure if, if Bill has in the past or not. Mr. Burns? 
Yeah, I, I've had a couple of conversations over the past three plus years, uh, nothing recent, but I think that uh, my sense of the discussions during consolidation and, and the couple of contacts I've had is, is that there likely would be people that would perhaps, if if they weren't able to stay in the town of Verona, uh, may have interest in, in being in the city of Verona rather than the city of Madison. And I certainly don't want to speak for everyone out there, but I, I think there may be some that have that view. Mr. Diaz. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I just had a quick question. Um, is there any thought to what, what would be the, the benefit to the city of Rona um, for, for revising this agreement potentially? Because looking at this, I see the potential for more traffic, more difficulties for, for the city in the future planning if, if stuff's already there, and potentially more people who aren't paying property taxes to the city using city services. And so I'm just kind of curious, what's, what's our benefit to, to changing any of this? Mr. Burns? Yeah, I, I just hesitate because I, I, I think some of the discussion about uh, strategy and, and, and what discussions we'd want to have in the town may be appropriate in closed session. But I, I think just in general talking about some of the potential benefits of the city from boundary agreement, um, I, I'd go back to a couple of the points that I'd, I'd mentioned in the last slide that we have here, um, that there are certain areas where if we feel that as we would would grow in areas that would be logical to develop in the city that that could result in a town island or could result in kind of odd pieces of, of parcels that um, are not within the city but perhaps would be more efficient to serve in the city um, there could be some benefit of, of having that agreed to uh, with the town up front and being able to address those issues um, you know, I, I think in general um, you know there there's probably more um, issues on the table that the town is looking for. The city is in a, a position where it has a lot of control due to the ETJ um, authority that is in place currently. So I think that's part of the discussion um, that the city should, has, should have about um, what are the potential benefits, uh, what is the town looking for, and where do we want to go on that. Other questions or comments? <clears throat> Anything else, Bill, that you wanted to add before we potentially go into closed session? No, nothing at this point. Mr. Manley? <clears throat> and I will make a motion to go into closed session as authorized by section 19.85 sub 1 sub E of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Steiner. Uh, the roll call vote requires a, I mean the uh, closed <coughs> session vote requires a roll call vote. Mr. Burns, if you would please. Alderperson Manley. Aye. Alderperson yours. Aye. Alderperson Bear. Aye. Alderperson Riki. Mayor Hokemer? Aye. Alderperson Doyle? Aye. Alderperson Diaz? No. Alderperson Steiner? Aye. And the uh, motion to go into closed session passes on a 6 to 2 vote.
We are back in open session. Are there any motions at this time? We have a motion by Mr. Years to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Baer. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried and we are adjourned. Thank you everyone and we will see you on Monday, next Monday.